in Harmon. I was asked quite in depth about the drug trafficking that went on with Dan Harmon, um, Mr. Clinton, Roger Clinton. The very afternoon that Charlene testified before the federal grand jury that the whole investigation started to unravel. I had taken in four informants to be interviewed uh, to testify before the federal grand jury in Saline County Affairs. They were actually never interviewed and were in fact badgered and harassed and told to leave. I received a phone call um, and they told me that um, I had made a very big mistake. And I was assured by the U.S. Attorney's Office that my name, that my, my testimony, that my statements, that the people that were on that witness list would never, ever be revealed. Well, ha ha, you know. Someone in the U.S. Attorney's Office had given Mr. Harmon a list of the effective witnesses, you know. That don't give you a very good feeling. I'm scared of these people. I'm very scared of them. Even with her job and reputation gone, Jean knew too much and was still a threat to Dan Harmon. One of his first acts after taking office as district prosecutor was to call for a grand jury to investigate Jean. The jurors, however, quickly realized Harmon's accusations were untrue and refused to indict her. Harmon's next step was to subpoena Jean and force her to hand over the information she had uncovered about him and other corrupt Arkansas officials. I refused to answer the subpoena because in the first place it was absurd for Dan Harmon to be conducting a grand jury investigation against himself. But if I had brought in any information about him, that would have put the very lives probably of the informants and witnesses in jeopardy. And I was certainly not willing to do that. If I had gone in and refused to turn any information over to them, I would have been jailed in Hot Spring County. And my mother received a call from a dispatcher in Hot Spring County that said that she overheard a conversation among the officials there that if I were arrested, that I would be killed in Hot Spring County Jail. So I refused to answer, and when Judge Cole issued a felony warrant for my arrest for failing to appear, then I left the jurisdiction. Even though Judge Cole had issued an illegal warrant, there was no one in authority in Arkansas willing to take a stand for Jean. While in hiding and away from her family, Jean waited for the long-promised indictments from the federal grand jury. She knew that once the charges were brought against Dan Harmon and other officials, she would be able to go home and clear her name. This was an especially difficult time for her family because her children were being followed and her home was under surveillance. Weeks turned into months. Then without warning, U.S. Attorney Chuck Banks announced that no indictments would be issued and the federal grand jury investigation of Saline County's corruption would be shut down. All public officials under investigation, including Dan Harmon, were cleared of all wrongdoing. Jean was stunned. Three grand jurors contacted me, two of them indirectly and one of them directly to inform me that they were ready to hand down indictments but they were informed by Chuck Banks that the grand jury was being dismissed and that no indictments would be sought. They were not told that they had the authority to hand indictments down on their own. In my opinion Chuck Banks should have been charged with obstructing justice. When Chuck Banks closed down the federal investigation, we were stunned. We couldn't understand what made Kevin and Don's murder so important and who had the power to shut down a federal investigation. In protest, Bob Govar resigned as lead counsel of the federal task force and was then demoted by his boss, Chuck Banks. Jean Duffy and her family were forced to leave the state. It was now five and a half years since Kevin and Don's murders. Detective John Brown, a 16-year law enforcement veteran, had moved his family into the Saline County area. The Ives family had asked the new sheriff to reopen the case, and John was given the assignment. However, 
just like Gene Duffy, John's first day on the job included a peculiar request from his boss. My uh, immediate supervisor, who was a lieutenant of the Saline County Criminal Investigation Division, took me for a ride that lasted approximately one hour. Um, during this ride to literally nowhere, uh, it appeared the whole purpose was to tell me to leave the case alone. He said things like, there's not anything to this. Um, this could have been an accident. It's going to bring you a lot of grief if you continue on and, and do this. And, and in the end, he finally said, you know, John, you really need to leave this alone. John was disturbed by his superior's attitude, and his concern escalated once he began examining the Ives Henry case file. It became obvious that uh, once I started going through the case file, it had been robbed of most of the pertinent evidence. Uh, no crime scene photographs, a list of evidence was not present, the things you would expect to find. Despite discouragement from his own department, John went forward with the investigation. Beginning at square one, he began tracking down the missing evidence. Several witnesses were contacted, including Charlene Wilson, who by this time was being held at a jail in a neighboring county. I run across a young lady named Charlene Wilson, who told a horror story that I didn't really believe at the time. So I started searching for evidence to substantiate just part of what she had said. Herman went ballistic, he called, he threatened me, he threatened Sheriff Pridgen, threatened Captain Gene Donham, the chief deputy, all because I talked to this one woman. Charlene believed she had been set up by Dan Harmon in retaliation for her testimony against him. The team of Prosecutor Harmon and Judge Cole managed to convict and sentence her to an unbelievable 30 years in the Arkansas Department of Correction. Guess who arrested her? Dan Harmon, the very guy that she says turned her on to drugs, now has her arrested. Dan Harmon, he walked to me, handed me what was supposed to be a search warrant, and he said, bitch, excuse me for saying that, I told you if you ever, ever brought my name up or brought anything up about the past dealings that we've had, that I'd take you down. He said, you're going to prison. I'm going to put you in prison. He did. I'm here. I mean, I, I've watched second, third offense people walk around with probation on top of probation on top of probation. Not this lady. First time she's been arrested for drugs. They allege that they found in her home. She gets 30 years. Sure, everybody ought to be able to see through this. You have to look at judges. You have to look at prosecutors, local attorneys, and law enforcement officials. Now, these are the people that enforce the drug laws, that prosecute the drug laws, and judge the drug laws. And yet, they are webbed in with the drug trade in the state of Arkansas. John quickly understood why Charlene had been put away. During her sworn deposition, she dropped a bombshell that would later be confirmed by other eyewitnesses. She was with Dan Harmon at the tracks the night Kevin and Don were murdered. The people at the track that night, to my knowledge, were Dan Harmon. I do know that the...